in this part we'll be talking about the family cucurbitaceae and this is the last family on our list because these are eight important families on which questions are asked in competitive exams so this is a cucurbitaceae we will first write down some important information about the flower the flower is e bracteate the flowers are incomplete that means some whorls are missing they are actinomorphic pentamerous that means everything is in multiple of five and the flower is epigynous that means the ovary is inferior now as we said it is incomplete that means some whorl is missing and the whorl which is missing is either male reproductive whorl or female reproductive whorl that means here we get two types of flowers male flower in male flower only male reproductive whorl would be there female whorl would be absent and the second one is the female flower so in female flower the female reproductive whorl that is gynoecium would be there but androecium would be absent so in all these flowers three whorls would be there sepals and petals are going to be common this one would have stamen and this one would have pistil now some important very unique features of this calyx there are five sepals they are gamosepalous that means five sepals are fused and the astivation is quinquinical in quinquinical astivation there are two sepals which are out completely two sepals are completely in and one sepal is going to be in and out in this case also for calyx it is same as the male flower that means there are going to be five sepals fused with quinquinical astivation now coming to corolla there are five petals gamopetalous that means again fused an astivation can be velvet or imbricate in this case also for corolla it is same as male flower now the male whorl because this is the male flower androecia there are five stamen now these five stamen can be free that means they can be polyandrous but the most common condition which is seen is synandrous synandrous means the anther and filament are fused we have seen a condition where only filaments were fused that is in malvasi family and in fabaceae family we have also seen where only anthers were fused that is asteraceae family here anthers and filaments both are fused here androecium is absent gynoecium is going to be there it is tricarpillary syncarpus and the ovary is inferior so there are only two families which we have discussed in these two families ovary is inferior one is cucurbitaceae family and the other is asteraceae family now using this information we will write down the floral uh, formula of male flower and female flower in case of male flower we start with this we write e b r it is e bracteate then actinomorphic already given to us so it is actinomorphic now coming to sex organs male flower will have only male uh, sorry male flower would have only male reproductive whorl that means the flower is staminate then calyx 
fused corolla 5 fused in this case androsium is also fused here we have written polyandrous which is not very common synandrous which is common that means anther filament fused but in this also what we find is one anther is and filament is free two anthers and filaments are fused and two anthers and filaments are fused g because it is a male flower it is absent so g0 if gynosium is not there there is no question of superior or inferior so this is the floral formula of the male flower now in case of female flower the first part remains the same it is going to be ebr e bracteate actinomorphic the flower is pistillate only female reproductive work then calyx same five gamosepalus corolla five gamopetalus androsium it is absent or sometimes androsium is highly reduced and it is seen in the form of rudimentary structures which are known as steminodes so we write this as it is absent or steminode gynosium tricarpillary syncarpus and ovary is inferior so we have to put the line above g now when we draw the diagrams in both the cases two walls are going to be same so let us make one diagram here we are drawing the male flower this is the floral diagram of the male flower this is for the sepals five sepals are there and they show quinquinical aspiration. That means two sepals are going to be out and two sepals are going to be in. I have made this one completely out. Let me make these two completely in. I'm going to make one more which is completely out. And let us make this one in and out. It is slightly bigger. But this is how it is going to be. Let us see. This is completely out. This is completely out. This is completely in. This is in. This has one margin in, one margin out. Now how do we show them fused? We have to show these kind of connections. So this indicates that the petals, oh sorry, the sepals are fused. And astivation is quinquinical. Now the next is the petals. There are five petals. Astivation, we can draw imbricate. In case of velvet, it is end to end. In imbricate, this one is going to be completely out. We will make one completely in and three are going to be in and out. Then that astivation is known as imbricate. This is completely out, this is in, this is in, out, in, out, in, out. So these two walls are going to remain same for the male flower as well as female flower. This is going to be the mother axis. Now as we are drawing the male flower, this is one anther filament which is separate. Then there are two anthers and filaments which are fused. So we show it like this. This is one anther, the other one. Here also, this is one anther and the other one. So two are fused, two are fused. That's why we have put this in bracket and this one is single. This is a male flower, so we are not drawing anything in the center. If we have to draw the diagram of the female flower, then the two walls are going to be same. The inner part is going to be a tricarpillary ovary. In tricarpillary ovary, the placentation is very important. Placentation is parietal, but it looks exile. There are these placenta which are coming to the center. So these placentae, they arise from the periphery and they come up to the center. And here are the ovules which are attached. So it is tricarpillary, syncarpus, it is fused and parietal placentation, placenta is around, arising from the periphery. 
it grows towards the center joints in the center and the ovules are attached here so it appears to be exile so if we are drawing a male flower these two walls and the stamen part and if we are drawing the female flower the same two walls instead of stamen we leave it as it is and the pistil is going to be like this if we have to draw stamen nodes then what we show is we just show these kind of dots this indicates that the stamen are rudimentary non functional that too if staminode is mentioned if it is not mentioned we are not going to draw any such structure here the important examples of this particular family important plants one is momordica that is bitter gourd cucumber these are some very important examples we are, we call them cucurbits so these are it is commonly the gourd family so bitter gourd cucumber smooth gourd rough gourd they all come into the same family so we have discussed eight important families from angiosperms and as i said these eight families are the most important ones on which maximum times questions are asked in various competitive exams so with this we are done with this chapter of morphology of flowering plants from the next video we'll start with anatomy of flowering